Categories are pretty straightforward. Basically, you're earmarking each transaction for the various cash flows. For example, I went to the grocery store today, so I'm going to classify that transaction as food and dining, groceries. I also went to the local farm supply to pick up some stuff from my garden, and I got some seeds, and I'm going to classify that as home and lawn and garden. Now, what categories you use for each transaction is totally up to you, but let's go up to the category list so you understand a little bit more. So go up to the window menu and choose categories. A new file will come with a default set of categories and most new users will find this adequate as a good starting point. Before I go further, I think it's important to understand the parent and possible subcategory relationship. This is more for reporting, but it's pretty simple. You might have a parent category such as utilities and then have subcategories such as electricity, natural gas charges, or telephone charges. Knowing that relationship, it should be pretty easy to understand the category window. Moving back to Quicken, let's see, uh, we look at the bills and utilities, and I've got a subcategory of mobile phone that I don't use. So all I have to do is click on the minus sign to get rid of it. And let's say I want to add a subcategory of utilities. All I have to do is select that and click on the plus sign and add new subcategory. I'm going to classify this as electric. You can double click to edit a category. And there you can change the name, add an optional description, or set the ex expense or income flag. Do note that that flag only ap applies to the parent category and all subcategories will assume that flag. If applicable, you can also mark a category as being tax related and you can associate it with the various tax form line items. Now existing users may find a bunch of unused categories in the, their category list. If you notice, there is a status column though that shows unused. Don't just delete things willy nilly because if they are actually in use, it will delete the category out of the transaction. What you really want to do is click on this gear icon and choose remove unused categories and that will expunge all the unused categories out of your file. One great thing about the new Quicken is that you can actually have categories saved on the fly. Let's say I went to Hardee's and I consider that health food. Just record the transaction and that new category will be saved. Expanding on this, using the colon key, it's really easy to also add subcategories. For example, I went to the gas station and I want to create the category of auto with a subcategory of gas. That's all I have to do is use the colon key and record the transaction and it will be recorded. One thing to note is that Quicken now shows the lowest level of subcategories. For example, here's the auto gas transaction I just entered and it's just showing as gas. If you want to see the full path like the old days, you go into preferences and choose long name and it will show your full categories. I think most users understand the purpose of categorizing transactions. And let's use this as an example. I've got my dummy test file here and let's type in groceries. And while I've sanitized most of this information, the groceries information is probably correct. I've probably, well, I've spent $52,000 in the past 23 years on groceries. That's fine and well, but sometimes you want to cross-categorize things, and that's where tags come into play. You might remember them called classes in other versions of Quicken. An example here is probably pretty fitting. Let's take my home. I've got all my various utility bills, I've got insurance costs, home repair costs, improvements. Well, how do I encapsulate everything so I can see how much this house has cost me in the past, let's say, 10 years? Or another example, how much has my car really cost me? Well, that's where tags come into play. To use tags, you have to show the tag column. Go down to columns and choose to show the tag column. Now you see it displayed. And let's say with my transaction for the uh, auto gas, I want to enter that as a tag of Camry. Hit that and record it. And now I've tagged it. And basically, I'll just want to go through and tag any transaction related to that Camry. Let's just do the oil change. If you wish to manage your tags, go up to the window menu and choose tags and you'll see the list of all your different tags that you have set up. 
and let's look at how this will really play out. For example, I rented a place years ago, and I set every transaction related to that rental as 211 millsaps. And if I type that in, I can see every cost associated with that house. Once you start playing around with tags, you'll soon realize just how powerful they are. Just be forewarned that tags can be kind of addictive. While I love Brandy as my pet and I consider her priceless, don't think for a second that I don't know the exact cost of her ownership. And tags are the only way that allow me to track this level of detail. Good luck.